on non-commercial stocks. Yeah, thank you. So that will be about, uh, uh, well, quite non-commutative spaces. You know that non-commutative torus is much more non-commutative than almost commutative geometries. <laughs> uh, well, so this is this is work done in with co-authors. So Daniel Dascanio and Pablo Pisani. So both from La Plata, so I am from Brazil. So this is next door, about two hours flight. Uh, well, so this is an old problem, a renormalization of non-commutative torus. Actually, it should be done long ago, but so we are in South America. Well, we are kind of slow to react. So we started to do this quite recently. <laughs> well, uh, and of course, I, I will have to remind a lot of things. So first, I will talk about well, renormalization of non-commutative spaces in general. And so what is this ultraviolet infrared mixing, which is the problem there. And also, we'll give a short crash course on Feynman diagrams. What is that? Because there are many people who are mathematicians who should not know what the renormalization is. Well, the second part, uh, it's actually well, the main thing, the main idea, it's about, again, the traces on non-commutative torus. Well, so these traces, well, will be used somehow to construct the action, which has to be renormalizable and to uh, start analyzing things. And the third part is really the renormalization. So this part is unfinished. It's, it's, well, it's a long technical work, and it probably will continue uh, longer than this talk. Uh, <laughs> and since it's unfinished, I only give conclusions, and therefore I will stop somewhere here. OK. So what is, what is this famous missing, mixing uh, between ultraviolet and infrared scales? And that is, that is so dangerous. So about the Feynman diagrams. Let's consider an action. So an action, uh, well, let's, let's work there. It's, it's an Moyal plane. So there is a Moyal or a Riffle product. And we have, yeah, let's do this in a physics notation. So this integral rather than trace. And it's action of Euclidean field theory. Well, let me put one half for technical reasons. Phi squared plus lambda phi to the fourth. So lambda is a constant, and each power here is actually power. Uh, it's, it's multiplication with the multiplication on the space. So this is Riffel or Moyal product. Uh, OK, now uh, we have to construct Feynman diagrams from that and consider the perturbation theory. Uh, so how is this done? So the first step of constructing Feynman diagrams, well, is a Fourier. So we replace the file field phi, which is a function of x, this is a small function, by the Fourier mode. So put it here, perform the integration, and then this part, which is quadratic, will define what is called the propagator. So this part will look something like the following. So it's phi, phi. So this will give you phi squared. This will give you m squared. And again, phi, phi. So this quadratic part is considered to be main part. And this is, uh, uh, this is the perturbation theory in this lambda. So and this gives you line. And to this line, we assign y squared plus m squared. So this is, well, this is a rule uh, why it's 1 over y squared plus m squared, because there is some log of some depth in the game. And if you expand log, you have 1 over, and then 1 more, 1 over, 1 over. So that's a growing uh, negative power. <coughs> and you see there is no trace of uh, non-commutativity here. It's just usual commutative because the product is closed. So you can delete any stars here. So it's just a usual point like that. 
from here what they get. So they get lambda and we get k1, k2, k3, k4, all the Fourier momentum which you can imagine. Uh, and also the delta function which is a conservation of momentum. So they have integration here trace that means that sum of the momentum is zero. And since we are non commutative it's not a whole of the story, so we have important phase factors, which you can write like uh, K1 theta K2 plus I K3 theta K4. That's how we deal with the phase factors which appear here. So the Moyal product is something, the usual product times the phase factor in the Fourier space. So they have two guys, and the graphically this can be represented like this. Yeah, yeah, you guess yeah, there, there are, but you see, you see, this this equals to zero. So you can reshuffle that zero somehow. Okay. So this this all that remains. You can represent in different forms. This is more convenient because you have uh, the phase factor between k1, k2, and k3, k4. So this is better. And now, well, and constructing the Feynman diagram is very simple. You put, uh, so constructing the Feynman diagram here. You put arbitrary number of these guys' vertices on the blackboard. Each has four lines. And then you connect them in arbitrary order, as you like. So you can do like that, like that, like that. So you take a propagator for each internal line. You take this for each, each point here. And you integrate all, all the moment. So this is the rule of how it is done. Hmm? And usually, well, you have a horrible integral of the many moment. It's, it's divergent. And this is what is called uh, ultraviolet divergence. Uh, all Feynman diagrams are classified according to certain properties. Uh, one property is the number of this external lines which are here. So they are not contracted to any of the propagator. And here one, two, three, four, and this is called the four point function. And another classification, well this may be number of loops just in the graph theoretical sense. Or it's it's almost equivalent in most of the cases, uh, number of these vertices in type of this vertex. Because you can add many, some other polynomials, and you have different types of the points here. So, and this diagram is one, two, three, is lambda p. So this is classification. So this infinite number, but in each order of perturbation theory, number of loops, or uh, power the parameter, and the number of diagram is finite, also grows sufficiently fast. Okay. Uh, so, let me know. Can you hear? Uh, let's consider the lowest order diagrams in this theory. So, I'll take a height. So the lowest of the means, so we have as uh, few loops as is possible, as few coupling constants, and as few external legs as possible. So what shall we do? Uh, so the lowest of the function, which is interesting, is a two-point function, and just one point. So we have this kind of diagram and we can just draw a loop. So one of the ways is to connect in the loop so this opposite <coughs> path. And uh, another way is more simple is to connect 
adjustment point. And now well, let's look at these phase factors. So there is the overall conservation of the momentum. So here, there are no phase factors. You see this momentum is in this classification would be, I don't know, K1, K2, and they are equal, well, actually with minus sign, uh, just because of the conservation of all this overall delta function. So these kind of diagrams, they are exactly in the commutative case. We don't know anything about it. But other parts of the diagrams, you see, uh, so there is a phase factor between momentum here and another phase factor. So they double. And these diagrams actually knows about the momentum. So this diagram is proportional, as I said. So this is D for K. So it's just one independent moment, which goes along this line here. Uh, and it depends on the momentum here, D. Uh, it would be 2 k theta p, and here it is k squared plus m squared, whole line, and and the couple. I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is phase factor. <laughs> That's all this is. Okay, uh, and this diagram is more or less the same, but without the phase factor. <coughs> One k squared plus m squared times that. Now let's look at these integrals. So these integrals in the four-dimensional uh, uh, well-momentum space. So this is one of the k squared, but the integration measure grows quite fast. So this diagram is horribly divergent, quadratically divergent. Well, but people know what to do with it. This diagram is, is much nicer. So there is this oscillating factor, which makes it actually, in some regularizations, at least it, may, it may makes it convergent. So it becomes nice and there are some hopes long ago that it will go this way. And so this will improve renormalization considerably. Uh, but the problem is that it has very nasty behavior when this momentum goes to zero. So this is a new feature. Usually this diagram, okay, it doesn't depend on the external momentum. So this is the nicest behavior you can imagine. So there is no behavior. But this depends. And this has a singularity. So this is finite. But <coughs> it is singular and this external momentum uh, goes to zero. So what does it mean? And it, does it mean, uh, well, there is this mixing. Uh, well, as I said, we can do whatever we like. We can put arbitrary number of points and connect them in arbitrary order. And also we can put these diagrams as sub-diagrams, as sub-graphs of larger graphs. So we have a line of some larger diagram. So there is something going on here. I don't care what's going on here. It's just internal line. And I can put these diagrams in arbitrary number. So what will happen here? So initially we have a propagator, one with p squared plus m squared, which is a nice function. It has no singularities. But then insert this guy. So this line will develop singularities at p equals to zero. When we try to integrate this, we'll have horrible divergences, which are called infrared divergences, because instead of something happens here, so this is divergence at large momentum. This will be divergence at small momentum. And they are, <coughs> so nobody in the machine knows what to do with them. That's the problem. Maybe you can somehow renormalize them, but it's uh, well, it was 15 years after the discovery of this problem, and nobody knows what to do with this. So the only way to overcome so far was to uh, modify the theory. And the most famous way to modify the theory is the gross walking car model. Yeah, so you add uh, a potential to that, and that's a nice model. It's even, well, it's even integrable, I think. Other ways to add a supersymmetry, which kills you a lot of problems, also this problem. Uh, also, you can add some other terms to the action. You can somehow modify them. Uh, so, oh, well, but the most, 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 most natural way was somehow neglected. So this is called infrared ultrawide problem. So if you just put it onto a compact space, onto the curve, which has no 
no ultra wide. Ultra wide that means large distances. If there are no large distances, then should be no. Yeah? Or infrared. If there's no infrared, there should be no infrared ultra wide mixing. It's just not there. Uh, so as I said, it should have happened 15 years ago. This time was uh, check whether the uh, non commutative phyto level theory on the torus is renormalizable, but it didn't happen. First of all, because it's not renormalizable, you need some, some more counted terms. And these counted terms, well, so they are they're also known for, for, for some time. And to explain why I introduced that terms into the action, I have to return to some other quite already old work uh, and consider these traces on non commutative torus. So from now on, I will be on non commutative torus. Uh, okay, let me delete this. Let me delete it. So from now on, it's just non commutative torus. All that. So this all is four dimensional because four is a special dimension for the fight of the four theory. I can go to two dimensions or so six dimensions, but four is kind of well preferred and it's well, moreover it's dimension of our world. Uh, so it's defined on we saw it many times. So these are unitaries. Well, this is more or less uh, the plane ways on the top. And we define the product between them like that. So equals to, uh, I would like to put it like that. Phi Q phi plus Q. There, of course, phi and Q, so that the moment of which I in Z And then you well you 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 construct polynomials from that in function. So you think of uh, these guys as these Fourier modes, and then you construct your algebra. Uh, so in there is a trace on there. So well you expand any any function smooth function as phi phi. So there is a trace on this algebra, which is just, well, the zero component Q. O, well, in more physical notation, is one over two pi four dx <coughs> five. So this is the trace. As long as we just consider the algebra itself, well, this is a unique trace. We don't have anything else. Uh, but what we need more. So we need to, to somehow algebra to put the opposite al algebra in the game, or to consider traces. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's it. It will be well. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, it will be. Uh, it will be rational or. Very, very irrational. So we should have to give it, it, it will be <laughs> die uh, Well, if you. So, what kind of object do they need? What kind of operators should be in the game? Uh, to guess this, let's consider again that phi to the four action and consider linearized equations of motion. So, this is. Uh, is the following. Uh, suppose it is phi develops some background, so there is some phi living in our space, like I don't know, like like king, some solid on or some background value, and we have propagation is phi on this background. We should just well, there is no propagation is Euclidean, but well, let's consider the operator. We should just tell us what kind of operators we need for physical application. And these operators, so the operator. Equations of motion for small fluctuations. Small fluctuations mean the following. So they have this phi, and they decompose this in a large phi, which is a background. So this is a field which is here, plus small fluctuations. 
And the small fluctuations is, well, what, what we like to have linearized equations to make. So they have, since they are linearized, they have a form, some linear operator acting on this fluctuation. It goes to zero. And this operator, well, you vary with respect to Q phi, you substitute Q with recomposition. And at the end of the day, we have the following. So this is minus d squared plus m squared plus, well, some numerical coefficient, which should be probably, well, three lambda. Uh, so first term which appears here is the left multiplication by this capital phi squared, right multiplication of the capital phi squared, and the left by phi, right, by phi. So we have mixture of left and right multiplication in the operators which we need, and therefore we need the trace. Uh, and uh, the trace well, we can invent it in many ways, but since renormalization is somehow related to the heat kernel expansion. My preferable way is to do it for the heat kernel expansion. And the trace, just to distinguish with this, I call this spur. Late multiplication by something, right multiplication by something else, or the other, which is Just the usual functional trace of R times a regulator, which is minus T Laplacian. And so this guy behaves like one of the T squared is a leading singularity. So we multiply it by T squared. And so they consider limit when T goes to zero. So that's the object. Well, it was calculated seven years ago. Huh? Oh, is it? Four dimensions. Four dimensions. Yeah. It's four dimensions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. 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 this delta is very Yeah, this delta is, well, it's Laplacian. Uh, so that was, yeah, again, the work with uh, Bruno and uh, Victor Gayal, and so that's uh, in 2007, we calculated this expression and also the heat kernel expansion, and well, now that's a good moment to think of organizing for this historical meeting for me because I met uh, my co-author for the first time in my life. He was somehow traveling seven years for the wedding walk. <laughs> so <laughs> it was very nice. Uh, okay, and this is, so this guy actually exists in, in two cases. So if theta here is rational, or if theta is the fun time, of course, there could be a mixture. So it's quite a large matrix, four by four, and it can be part rational, part diaphantine. What is mean rational and diaphantine? So uh, rational means that, uh, well, so well, there is a sub lattice in Z4 such that theta times Q is again in, this, in, in Zn. So this is rational. And the diaphantine means that this is, this is not true with, uh, with some gap. So there's some gap minus P. So this is, uh, oh, Q. So this is separated from zero, meaning that the infinite of this for all the lattice Z4 is uh, larger than something, some positive constant, 
absolute value of q1 plus beta, and that, that you should be able to find such constant so that I see <coughs> beta positive. So then you can calculate this thing, uh, and this equals uh, uh, okay, I, I need to introduce I introduce something else. So I will just write the answer and then show what is that. Uh, sum of the Q when it is in certain sub -lattice. And this is L minus Q, uh, Q. And well, this sub lattice is exactly well, it's rational lattice, yeah. So then Q, Q in this G, uh, which is Z, this is a form of, form of enter, uh, then. So Q sends. Uh, theta sends this small q to 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 z four. What we go in? Uh, and nice property of this trace is actually not just that it's, it's uh, some kind of a trace or, or, or an operation which we can have, which we could have guessed without this, but the whole the whole heat kernel expansion is is obtained very simple. You just take the usual commutative heat kernel expansion. And you replace, uh, well, the trace you had there, well, roughly speaking, there are a little bit more rows by this trace. And it goes to all the expansions. And since the heat kernel expansion is what actually defines you the renormalization at one loop, that means that these objects are very relevant at one loop. So, and if you like to reproduce the structure of your ultraviolet divergences, you should not consider just terms in the action which are local in the sense of this trace. So this means, well, it's an integral of something, of some polynomial, let's say this is what is we call usually local action. But we should also add terms which are local in this sense, so which have this form. Okay, so this is roughly an idea of I'm going to do, and now let me write the action which satisfies this requirement. No, it's, it's uh, well, if it is diaphantine, it's purely diaphantine, there is just one solution for that is Z equals to zero. Oh, so it should be, oh, well, the point is to uh, uh, write exactly what does it mean, make mixture of rational and diaphantine, it's quite long, because you, you, you should allow that rational sub lattice is somehow, well, oddly embedded into the lattice. But you can think about the block, uh, block matrices, so this is one theta is, Two by two is diaphantine, and other is, is rational. So there is some mixture. So if it's purely, if you purely diaphantine, which I will consider actually, so there is only one solution: L equals to uh, Q, small Q equals to zero. So we are actually returning to the old trace, you know, instead of component two, but it is bilinear. Uh, okay, okay, we'll use the high tech. Yes, yes, one of them. Well, trace, yes, we, we introduced the trace phi squared, and also we introduced a lot of traces. Uh, well, a lot means two more traces for, for the interaction there. So from now on, I will just consider the purely diaphantine case, because well, we have to restrict 
ourselves with some choice. Yeah, well, uh, this small area, you know, this uh, small R, they are well thinking. Yes, yes. So this is algebra and this is opposite algebra. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Well, I, I mean, when you, uh, it's again part of the same statement which I made. So this extension to, to the differential operators, uh, well, at least for the differential operators of any order goes kind of the same. You just use this, this trace for the symbol, and the rest goes exactly as in the kinetic case. So this is. Yes. No. No, no, no. Gen generally, no. In, if, if it's if it's purely definition, I said it, it will factorize in the product of traces. Uh, well, the simple interpretation. So, uh, what's that? Uh, well, so what are the functions here? Roughly speaking. So this is functions which are two pi periodic and all of the rest. Uh, when you can see that just q belonging to this lattice tablet is V, that means that they are more periodic. So the periodicity is, is with respect to, 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 to the small hint. And what you do, you restrict a small L. You, you get rid of everything which is not periodic with respect to this small periods. In L, small L, you disregard also in small r. And then this sound will give you just, just that trace. So it will be that trace, but with a lot of moles disregard. So they are more, yes, more periodic. So if, yeah, you can take, uh, let's say, all even numbers in Z, so this is, well, if theta is something like one half, then it means that just the smallest works. Yes. Uh, well, so now theta is diaphragm time. Just to make a choice, uh, what happens? And the action we write is, is the following. So the action is, is that usual trace of the derivative of pi squared, we put one half. So this is completely, uh, well, I don't have the action. It's the usual first term in the pi times y action plus m squared, all the two of pi squared. This is a mass term. But now, uh, well, I'm going to use another rule to, to, to select the proper terms in action, namely so there should be some traces in one of these, some traces. Is that one? I have to put, uh, well, it's mu square root all the two, it can be even negative, well, just to, to look like a mess. <coughs> so there are two messes in the game. Uh, then I have lambda pi to the four, which is again the usual thing, plus more traces. Uh, let me see how we call this lambda one and lambda two. This is totally interchangeable, but I can make some mistake later in identifying them. Uh, Phi of phi cube and of phi squared phi cube. So that's all, all, all I can write with this modified notion of locality. And uh, It's derivation, it's derivation. Yeah, that's, 
Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's scrolling. Scrolling. scrolling, yeah. It's, it's well so it's yeah. contrasted. Yeah. Uh, well, so our hope that this model will be renormalizable, and uh, so the goal of this ongoing work is to check this into some leading code. Namely, what we are going to check, and we, we almost succeeded, is to verify that the procedure that I described at the beginning, so if you take the graphs, which are called non-planar graphs, which is this funny, funny divergence, it's different divergence of the usual case, and you put into a larger graph, uh, you don't have troubles here. So we did check this, but, but to, to complete this and to, to really renormalization to two loop order, you still have to deal with dice. Okay, so what happens now? Yeah, the only two conditions is, is exactly that. So this, no, this trace, this trace probably exists, uh, but it behaves in, in, in a nasty way. You, you see what happens? Here. So it's, 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 it's a very non, uh, well, non smooth, non, 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 non continuous in, in, in theta. So it suddenly jumps and you go from uh, irrational to irrational number. And therefore, there you, you need some kind of a gap between them, then you d really don't know what happened. So, so the limit exists for all Yeah, I, I think that the limit exists for all theta. Of, of, of course, well, you, you see, you, you, should, you should exist, yeah. The it, yeah, the, uh, so I don't know what happens then. It's, well, let's say algebraic numbers which are in between them and them. I really don't know what happens in general, but we, we had some examples. And really, the behavior uh, of that kind of things, of traces of differential operator, really depends on how fast the Fourier modes go to zero, then when it goes to infinity. Uh, which is, you see, there is, no, there is no universal formula for any element of the algebra. That's the point. And they, well, it was really a couple of examples. One, so then you can calculate this diet. It's a trace. No, no, that's thank you. That's <laughs> it. You're doing my job. <laughs> It's a matter of computation. So this So that's the only problem. Yeah, that's yeah. No, then exists. It's actually it's much nicer than than, than the plane. Because on the plane you have uh, really you know, some you know, troubles if you go in high orders of expansion of special actions. Yeah, that. Yeah, but here it's, it's very nice. But the problem is it's we don't know what to do for. Well, it's a few, few numbers, algebraic numbers. What is that? So usually numbers are there, there sometimes. Okay. So now let me consider. Well, the diagrams, uh, again, so there are lowest order diagrams. Well, what, what does it mean, renormalization? So I have to uh, consider 
well, let's say one by one, all the orders of perturbation theory, well, which is infinite, uh, starting with lower order diagrams, namely with uh, just a few external lines and uh, a few loops. And then I do renormalization step by step, which is, uh, by the way, a very well-defined procedure, so there is no hand weighing in this. I just consider these diagrams and I add what is called counter terms. I better explain you the things when I, when I just consider the action. So as we know, in the lowest order, there are just two diagrams. It's only two point functions. It's this, which is planar, so there are no phases. The rule of phases is exactly the same as on the plane. And another one is this. Ah, yeah, this is a good guess. So because just to don't, we don't want to make our life too hard, so this mu squared, it starts with correction. Uh, I mean, it, it's a technical thing. Including this thing, these guys at classical level, uh, it makes life you combinatorially uh, harder because you just have more diagrams combinatorial. But they are easy because what is that? So it's actually, if you take this, uh, uh, think and, and put it into your operator. This is rank one operator. So it's like projection on the zero momentum path. It improves convergence uh, enormously. So this is there is no danger. So we consider this guy is just a counter term for the beginning. Because otherwise, of course, there would be some diagram with uh, yeah, there will be no uh, well. You can insert this guy in, in many ways. So the counter term diagrams which help you, which actually help you later. Okay, so what happens here? So this diagram, well, it's, let's say, as usual. Well, many of you don't know what is usual, but it's okay. It's, it's not dangerous anyway. So this diagram is, as I said, it is proportional to something like this coupling constant, which appears here, where it's here, times here is not an integral, it's a sum of the phase factors. So let's put it P here going momentum, it's E to I K theta P uh, K squared plus M squared. So I introduce a regularization because all my, my, my uh, what I told before about convergent diversion, it, it was just empty declarations before you really regularize them. So that means I replace all the propagator by one plus epsilon. Epsilon is considered positive. Then it is sufficiently large. Then all this is absolutely convergent. I can do some manipulation with that, and then analytically continue back to the to the po uh, uh, to the point where epsilon is, is zero. And divergence means this function, this function on, on, on a complex plane, it develops a pole one of the epsilon. So this is this is what is divergence is. Uh, so this is, this is an easy sum. Which is, well, you can open, you, you can just open your computer, run mathematics, and it will give you an answer for that is it. Uh, so I call it S1 of P. And uh, the result is S1 of 0 is just over epsilon plus finite term. So then P is zero, so the external momentum is zero. This is something like that. So this is divergence. And this divergence is, well, is a very specific, it does not appear for uh, P not equal to zero. And we have to find some counter term somewhere. So what is that? This is a two point thing. So this is quadratic in the field. It appears only in the momentum equals to zero. So quadratic in the field momentum equals to zero doesn't contain any derivatives, it's a constant. So what is that? This is this guy. So this quadratic in the field doesn't depend, oh well, uh, and, and just non-zero for zero moment. So that means that this is, can be canceled exactly by a counter term, so we have mu squared here. And the mu squared should start with exactly this minus p squared m squared or the epsilon plus some finite 
So if you add this to a classical action, then the, even already the classical part of your physics will cancel it. Uh, lambda. Yeah, and so this is <coughs> lambda. Right, right. Well, uh, but but this is as I said. So here is just kind. Of, well, I, I look and I see. But this is a well a very defined transition. So what you are doing here, it may not work. But this is an algorithm of what you are doing. Uh, for p not equal to zero, what do we have? So they do as usual. So if you like to analyze uh, behavior of some sound, which is potentially the version of like you, you do the Poisson inversion. It's what you do. So it's 2 pi m times lambda times the sum of it. Actually, it is, it's now, uh, it's not exactly the moment, it's a dual vertex. Uh, K plus absolute value, and here is K1, which is the first basic function. And again, the same thing. Well, okay, what do you, what you should know about that, that this, is, this function is a nice function when momentum goes to infinity, so for large argument, it's, it's quite okay. It's all is, so this sum is actually convergent if you don't have zero here. And you don't have zero here if your theta is, is irrational. So that's more or less the end of the story, and it works. So you have just one counter term which needs you to cancel these guys. And the rest is finite. Of course, this is a curiosity. So I need a Diophantine condition here. And somehow it doesn't appear here. Well, what's the reason? Well, the reason is actually the danger in, in all that manipulation of Feynman diagram. I mean, what you really need is not just that thing you have fixed momentum. You have to put here the Fourier mode and make a sum. And then you're making the sum, you're making sum in, in this momentum T. And then you have here dangerous thing. So it's never zero, but it may come very close to zero. Also, this guy is one of, one of the arguments. Okay? And then this sum will be convergent for all elements of the algebra with torus, and the torus, only if this theta satisfies the Dyson criteria. It doesn't matter what kind of, what, what, what's the value of beta. Any, any polynomial behavior will, will make this, after all, convergent. Because otherwise, I cannot substitute the back to the action. You see, it will be something which is, which is nonsense. Okay. So, I have 10 minutes, and it doesn't make much sense to go <laughs> into loop order, but uh, let me just. Uh, well, I think it. Yeah, I guess it would be just ju just for the Lazinski, it would be the same. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, th there is a formula for Lazinski which will give you the same. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's it's just if you consider the commutative case, if theta, yeah, if theta equals to yeah. So if it go, if it's just theta is zero, then this z is, is is the whole lattice, and then it means just just it's just the integral. Yeah. So this usual trace in the sense of regular. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and then there's this commutative; it's a whole trace. So it's the same for Lazinski. Or you can define uh, well for zeta function. For zeta function is of course the same because it's Zeta in heat kernel just goes one to one. Uh, it's just well a short, short graphical summary of what it is. Uh, 
So when you stay still at one loop, you also have to analyze the diagrams which contain four external legs. And there, there are many. So with uh, four external legs, it's four points in one loop. It's first is like that diagram. So you have two vertices and you contract this line. You have some uh, phase factor here, some phase factor here, but they are kind of opposite direction, so they cancel. And this diagram is exactly like commuter phase. Then you can do something different. You can, so there is a vertex here, vertex here, but here lines are crossed, so this is a diagram. There's no planar, and you have phase factor between here, phase factor between here, but since you twisted the lines, they doubled, and this is a new non commuter diagram. What else you can think? Uh, you can make, uh, let me see, like this. So this is a vertex, this is a vertex. Uh, but instead of using two neighboring lines here, you use two opposites here. So again, this diagram is what is called non-planar, but meaning that, uh, so there is no phase factor appearing here, but there is phase factor appearing here, which is, well, there is nothing to cancel here. And you can continue, so you have something like, well, in total, I think, six diagrams of various things. You can analyze all of them. And of course, since we already analyzed long ago, a heat kernel, there is no surprise in, 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 in one loop order. And uh, the divergences, so these are renormalizations of, uh, well, of course, of lambda, as usual, because it's four-point function. So there are four fields outside. So this renormalization of lambda, lambda one, and lambda two. So no other divergences of here. So all what is divergent here is proportional to that strap. So at least here, that means that one field has to be zero, and here this means is a funny moment of conservation between the trial of this. So this is fine. Well, now if you start going to two loops, uh, number of diagrams multiplies, and yeah, I will just say that. It's rather many of them, you can imagine, yeah. So they have two loops. Have a huge number of possibility of contracting them, but this is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is the structure of the sun. So you have a lot of propagators, and they are all, uh, you need an analytic continuation in here. So you have a double sum in a four dimensional lattice <coughs> with some ugly phase factor. How you should, how an analytic continuous to epsilon goes to zero? Then just, well, it, it's, well, the method is direct observation of truth. So you just sit down and look at that. Then you understand that this actually is divergent here and here. You subtract these divergent parts, which are simple but divergent. You analytically continue them by looking through the textbook and showing it, okay, the sum is actually a theta function of probably of theta two or theta four, whatever. And they go uh, line by line. And then you prove that actually what remains is fine. So each of the each of many diagrams is a lot of work, and that's why we did not use it. But so far, all our guesses of what is fine and what is not, it did work. So I'm quite optimistic, and I think that uh, we shall actually show that all this procedure goes to two loops, at least. And then, well, then there should be proof that it goes to any loop. But yeah. no, no, it's not like well, we sit down and observe the truth and at infinite time. But yeah. The, the, yeah, there is a certain technique which is also not, will be not so easy to apply here on the term. Uh, what you know for sure that, uh, so if you go to two loops, there is a kind of, uh, of a trouble that you expect or expect to happen uh, on the basis of what I said about this mixing. So first what you have to do is, is you consider the situation, then you have a line, and you insert here the diagram which is non planar So by, by definition, this is what makes it run. And the first diagram which behaves like that is, it's two loop, two point function. 
So what we were able to check that this really leads to no trouble. So the rest of the troubles appear in here, but they are all canceled by something. So this to know for sure. And now, well, is one of the growth diagrams which are less less singular, therefore they're better behavior, and you have a good feeling about what will happen. <coughs> uh, so that's all that I'm going to, to, to say. Well, there is no conclusion because it's not concluded. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, no, I see why, well, why find phi squared. Uh, so this is uh, what is still left over, so we don't know. <laughs> uh, <that's laughs> uh, yeah, okay, well, it's a good warning, so this is the danger. Right, I could, no, things can happen. No, of course, this diagram is here. Right to the corner. Well, the uh, thing which you're analyzing now, so this is, yeah, it's four point function. Yeah. It's four point function, yeah. No, there are many of them. Oh, yeah, as you can, no, but it'll be, it's, it's, it's three loops. No, no, we are not going that far. I'm going that far. Yeah. No, I don't know what happens with that. And you see, it's not 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 a well-defined question. What happens with the diagram? Because they, this, all these divergences <laughs> make. Okay. Well, so it's, it, it depends on at, at which at which place you you consider this limit. Uh, right. Well, we we use this limit to check actually that the God coefficients correctly are minimized. So this, but it's of course it goes before and then it is. So if you write if you write individual diagrams, you can find some limit and it goes to to infinite order mu. So many things just to finish, and you you are back with. Uh, uh, diagrams on uh, uh, on the model plane, but this before you do the random normalization, because you after you yeah, before yeah. no the random normalized uh, you see it's that 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 one is not random normalized. In terms of you, you, see, you see double trace is is two times the volume. No, no, it's, it's doable. It's doable. But it's, it, it makes your life a little bit. Uh, no, no, we use this counter term. But we use it in conservative way. So, I, of course, I can put it just into the propagator. And it will change, well, one of the terms in the sum. No, I mean, it's a nice term. It's, 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 well, what you add is a compact operator. It's more like CP. Rank 1 is. Thank you.